Welcome back to the county seat. You know, in the game of Monopoly, when you go to jail, you do not pass go, you do not collect $200. However, in the game of real life, it's the counties who are not collecting the fees for housing state prisoners. This has become quite a controversial issue and one that county seat reporter Terry Wood will cover for you. This is it, the end of the road. For many convicted felons who were ever hoping to rejoin society, the last part of their journey may be spent in a place like this, a county jail rather than a state prison. Upon sentencing, the standard statutory procedure for convicted felons is to be remanded directly to state corrections, the prison. But many of those prisoners will eventually end up in a county jail where the conditions are less harsh than the penitentiary. That's because most of the county jails contract with the state to house excess convicts. But there is a growing trend among district court judges to take a more active role in a person's incarceration and sentence them to serve their time directly under county supervision. And many of Utah's sheriffs are concerned about it. The judge will say, uh, you know, I don't think you've quite committed a crime uh, that uh, warrants you to go to prison. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to sentence you to one year in the county jail. Uh, that creates a burden on that county jail because now the county is responsible to uh, house that inmate and, and pay the expenses that it costs. The district courts use it as a legitimate tool. The issue is not whether the, the facility is being necessarily used correctly, it's a question of who's going to pay what portion of it. Contract prisoners, uh, we receive uh, 45 around $45 a day. Probationary prisoners or prisoners sentenced to the county jails, we get 23, I believe it is, a day. We're not treating them any different, that's for sure. They still eat the same food and uh, use the same facilities. The source of the problem is in the funding. Prisoners who come to the jails from the prison are paid for under a contract funded by the state at a higher rate. Prisoners who come to the jails directly from the courtroom are paid from another fund that the legislature has continually underfunded, leaving the reimbursement rate at $23. I think that there are some legislators that believe that, uh, that when, when the state took over the court systems that uh, the counties agreed that they would, they would house state inmates. We don't believe that. We believe that that conditional probation inmates probably should be compensated at the same rate that a contract inmate is. If the legislature at the state level thinks that it's better to make the county to be the, the bearer of bad news to the county taxpayer, property taxpayer in our case, then I would just appreciate it if the legislature would stand up and take responsibility as well as say, well, we'll just cut the budget and that's a county responsibility. Well, no, it's a state responsibility. The solution to the problem could be as simple as getting the legislature to establish a specified contract rate for the courts to use and then fund it sufficiently. Another route would be to require all felons to be remanded to state corrections for punishment, but allow a judge to recommend specific sentencing. According to Sheriff Smith from Kane County, this idea would make sure that all prisoners are evaluated for the risk they might pose. Still another would be to come up with a whole new model for jail funding. Some new funding mechanism within the counties for the jail seems to make some sense. And I think that's an issue that Utah Association of Counties and others should really put their heads around. Go to the legislature and define what portion they are or aren't going to pay and we get it earmarked. And it's going to be paid out on an annual basis, whatever that is. And then we go to the cities or we create a, either a fee or a, perhaps a mill levy for jails. Several options exist for solving the funding of conditional probation inmates. And with some cooperation from the state legislature, some of the issues will be solved. However, at this time, the strain on the counties is only getting worse. Reporting for the county seat, I'm Terry Wood. Thanks, Terry, for that report. Now, Terry indicates that since he originally interviewed Sheriff Smith of Kane County for that story, the actual reimbursement rate for condition of probation prisoners has dropped from $23 a day down to $15.90 per day, which even further stresses the county's budgets. When we come back, we are going to talk with some guests that may find an answer in some new funding models. We'll have a roundtable discussion on jail funding in just a minute.